SEO stands for search engine optimization and is something that has benefited me and my business massively. In this video, I interviewed SEO expert Danny Richmond to help you understand if dedicating time to SEO is the right decision for you and your business. There are basically four stages to ranking on Google. Way before you even think about SEO, you've got to think about what you're bringing people into, what you're trying to bring people into with SEO. So your website has to be a great experience. Well, I think AI is going to have a massive impact, not just on SEO. I mean, SEO is the least of my concerns in terms of the impact of, of, of AI. Danny is one of the most respected SEO experts in the world. And we're lucky that he's dedicated some of his time to give us this knowledge and these gems. So sit tight, buckle up and listen carefully. So today we are joined by SEO expert, mentor of the year winner. I mean... Danny Richman has talked in front of uh, thousands of people, helped hundreds of business owners, personally helped me through my SEO journey. And the loyal subscribers on this channel will know how I've benefited from SEO. And that has come because of the knowledge and wisdom that Danny has given me. So firstly, welcome, Danny. Thank, thanks for joining me today. Hi, how are you doing? I'm very well. I'm very well. Now, the first question uh, I wanted to ask you is, why do you think SEO is so important for small businesses? Well, um, I guess the first thing to say is I don't necessarily think it is important for all small businesses. I think there are certain businesses that it doesn't really suit at all or where it just could be really too challenging for a startup, for a small startup that's got limited resources. So it might be just kind of worth mentioning a little bit about that first, kind of where SEO may not be the best approach. So, you know, if you're a small business and you don't have a huge amount of investment behind you and you are going into an industry, say, for example, like fashion, which is, you know, through the work I do at the Princess Trust, I meet a lot of uh, young fashion startups. And, you know, if you're going into an industry and what you're selling are kind of like branded t-shirts, hoodies, baseball caps, that kind of thing, that's really hard. I mean, to try and rank on Google for things like t-shirts, hoodies, and baseball caps, when the kind of websites you're going to be up against on Google are like Amazon, ASOS, you know, even Marks and Spencer or brands like that, you know, yeah, that's that's really, really tough. So so that's just kind of one example. But I would say, you know, uh, that that's where sometimes I would advise people SEO isn't always the right approach for 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 every business. But in terms of why for many uh, it is a, a good idea, first of all, because it's achievable without a budget. Um, SEO really only requires your time. Uh, it's not like having to kind of run paid advertising where, you know, you need a budget to kind of use in that. So it's just it's just your time. So if you have time available, that's great because that's really just about the only cost. But the other thing I think that really kind of sets it apart is that if you compare SEO to other forms of marketing or advertising, let's say, for example, you were thinking about running uh, some Instagram ads or some Facebook ads for your business, you know, that that form of marketing, that's what we call push marketing. Yeah. Because when somebody goes onto Instagram or Facebook, they probably don't want to see your ads. I mean, let, let's, let's be honest, how many people really want to look at ads? You know, a lot of people have ad blockers installed so they'll never even see them even if they are on the page a lot of people are just kind of blind to advertising now they just they don't even notice it's there and a lot of the times when people do click on ads they're clicking on them by accident they didn't even mean to click they're just like their thumb clicked on the ad you know which then costs you money you know so seo is very different because you know let's say for example you've got a business i don't know um well, let's say let's say a business that kind of offers, um, you know, wellness workshops to, uh, to, to corporate <laughs> companies. So we'll take your business as an example. If somebody goes to Google and they do a search on Google for, you know, wellness workshop providers or corporate work wellness workshop, there, there, there are two things you know about that person doing that search. Number one, they're looking for the exact product or service that you offer. Fantastic. And two... They're looking for it right now, right this very moment. So, you know, they are in a stage of buying, you know, and they're being proactive about it. So as long as you can get yourself visible on those search results at the point where they're doing that search. And of course, that's the challenge is getting yourself uh, visible in the search results. 
that's pretty much guaranteed to bring very, very qualified visitors coming to your website. And as long as your website isn't terrible and, you know, what you've got, what you're offering on there looks attractive to people, that's pr pretty much guaranteed to bring some uh, some good inquiries or some good sales to your website. So I think that's kind of what sets search apart from many other forms of marketing. And one of the reasons why Google is so successful as a company, because it can provide that. Yeah, I mean, everything you said, I am someone who's benefited from directly. So um, I've benefited from someone searching for the service that I offer and contacting me and then me going in and delivering the work. And, you know, yeah. as a small business owner, that's transformed my business. Before we go into the simple methods that p business owners can use to get started with SEO, can you give us some examples of business owners that you know that have implemented SEO practices and got the benefit from it? Well, so a good example is, um, I mean, just, just to kind of be clear, I actually do very little SEO implementation these days. So for, for the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, 15 years, um, what I've mostly been doing is training. So I will typically work with a company where they've got an in-house marketing team that are doing everything themselves, but they need someone to advise them, to help them, steer them in the right direction. And so I will do training and, and work with that team and kind of help them along the way. So um, I actually get involved in very few SEO projects where it's me doing the SEO myself. However, I do have a few favorite clients where I have got a bit more involved. And there's one particular client that I've been working with for about the last six, seven years. And this is a law firm, actually. And it's, you know, it wasn't a huge company. This was a small local law firm. They were doing, um, so they're, they're criminal defense solicitors. So, you know, if somebody gets arrested for whatever it might be, uh, you know, obviously one of the first things they do is they go to Google and they're looking for, it's like, ha! help you know i'm in the police station and i'm trying to find a lawyer so you know they're, they're looking for someone for help for that and the i think the reason i took the project on in the first place is because i find the law really interesting you know and i thought maybe by working in this field i'd learn more about the law and that's one of the things i love about my work is i get to learn a little bit about all these different industries you know so i kind of took that project on and i think at the time i mean their website if I'm being honest with you, when we started, their website was pretty horrible. Kind of in common with so many other law firms, you know, um, you if you ever go and have a look at a solicitor's website or any kind of profession like accountants, solicitors, all these kind of things. Oh, man. I mean, their websites are really just quite so just so boring and dry. Yeah. And all they ever really talk about on those websites are about themselves, you know, we are a very experienced law firm. We've been practicing for 25 years, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's just dry, you know. So the first thing I did when I got involved with, with that firm, and I think this is important and useful for everybody, is even bef way before you even think about SEO, you've got to think about what you're bringing people into, what you're trying to bring people into with SEO. So your website has to be a great experience because what is the point of getting a website ranking on Google, if all that's going to happen is people are going to come into your website and go, eh, and then just like leave immediately, you know? So you've got to get the website in good shape. And so what that meant in that case was to take this focus away from the law firm and focus much more on the people who are coming into this website. And so for about the first month of that project, I didn't do any SEO, didn't make any changes to the website. I spent a month sitting in court watching how that works, going to prisons and meeting people who have been through that process. I really needed to understand those clients that were coming to the website and know what, what's that experience like? You know, when the police knock on your door and you get carted off to the police station, what does that feel like? And it was very clear that this was for pretty much everybody. They were terrified. You know, it's a horrible and a really scary experience, you know. And, you know, not all of the people that are contacting a criminal law firm have done a crime. You know, a lot of yeah. them are in the crime. And, 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 and it's a really scary and worrying time for those people. And so we needed to reflect that on the website and show we understand that this is 
a scary, worrying experience, and we're here to help you. So that means a complete change of how you kind of position the firm. You know, it's not all about us, us, us. It's all about you, you, you. And then I kind of got thinking about, well, okay, if you have been arrested and you're going to Google, is the first thing you're doing looking for a solicitor? You often not. You want to know, okay, so I've just been arrested for fraud or for possession of class A drugs or whatever it might be. What does that mean? Like, what could happen to me? What What's the sentence for that? What's the process like in court? You know, so people have got tons and tons and tons of questions that they're asking on Google. And they're also, their partners are worried, their girlfriends, their wives, they're worried about their family, how they're going to support. So they're putting hundreds of questions into Google and I wanted to make sure that this website, this law firm's website, came up right at the top for all of those thousands of questions that people are asking at the point at which they've been arrested or charged for an offence. And so, um, yeah, over over the course of the last few years, uh, we've taken that website. I mean, I think at the time it got something like about 20 visitors a day. And that website, uh, well, we just hit for the last 12 months, we just hit over a million visitors a million since the beginning of this year oh wow okay yeah yeah wow um, and uh and obviously the impact that then has on client inquiries i mean that website is now generating something like around about four to five hundred client inquiries every day oh wow so yeah so they've now had to kind of put a whole team in place just to process the client inquiries that are coming in every day and, and just to to touch on that before they implemented any seo strategies before they started uh, i think a, a good point you made here was getting the customer experience so not telling the customer about why you're so good finding out how they will benefit from your services really honing in on the customer experience so i think that was a really good point to make there um, completely and 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 do you know what i mean one of the things i often recommend to smaller businesses when they're thinking about going into seo because the one thing i will say about seo as well seo isn't easy especially if you're in a competitive industry you know this is something that's going to take time and effort and work and and you know you need to kind of hone your skills to uh, to improve it so before you start making that commitment you really want to be sure that your website is going to satisfy these people that you're trying to bring in and so one of the tips i often suggest to smaller businesses is before you even start doing seo go and run a google advertising campaign don't have to spend a lot of money you know 100 pounds could be enough, maybe 150 pounds total budget. And just spend that on bringing in people to the website. Because if you run a Google Ads campaign, you will get clicks on your ads and you're only paying if people actually click on your ad. It's yeah. pay per click, you know. So you will bring people in who are looking for the service or product that you offer and have a look what happens when, when you do. And if you've just brought 100 people into your website, all who are looking for the exact service or product that you offer and not a single one of those people goes on to buy a product or make an inquiry, there are things you need to sort out before you even start thinking about SEO. There's clearly something fundamentally broken about the way that you have either positioned your business or the way that you're conveying that to people. And so, yeah, I, I would strongly recommend that before you even start down the road of thinking about SEO. Is yeah. just, if I do manage to make SEO work, is this going to be a good use of my time or are there more important things to fix? Because the way I always describe it is a little bit like having a bucket of water and you've got a hole in the bottom of the bucket where there's water leaking out and you're thinking, oh, I need to fix this. I'm going to do that by pouring more water into the top of the bucket. It makes no sense. <laughs> Don't pour more water in the top of the bucket. You've got to fix the hole, you know? Yeah. Um, and so that would always be the first thing I suggest is, fix the hole in your fix that leaky bucket uh, of your website before you start pouring more water in the top. That is a, a great analogy. Now, just to yeah. go back to the law firm quickly, you mentioned mm. now that they're getting about four to 500 inquiries a day. Before they started with their SEO journey, before they started with making their website, you know, customer focused, what were their inquiries like at that moment? Four to five a week. Four to five a week. Wow. 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 <laughs> that is incredible. So they've gone on a whole SEO journey and now they're, you know, four to 500 uh, a yeah. day. Which is fact, now, now they, I mean, they were, uh, a, they were a local law firm operating from one office in, in North London. 
Um, and they're now, they've opened up a new office in central London, in Birmingham, in Manchester, in Bradford. So yeah, it's it's been transformative for that business completely. Amazing. So with that business, you help them create content around the key search queries that their customers were looking for, the information their customers were looking for, which then led to inquiries. I mean, we've pretty much answered the question, but if you could maybe provide uh, some other examples, what are things that small business owners can do to get started with their SEO? Once they've sorted out their hole in the bucket, uh, as you put, um, what can they do to get started? Well, I think it might be worth, before I kind of speak about that, I think it might be worth just kind of very briefly explaining, like, well, how do you get a website ranking on Google? What makes Google yes. decide to show this website higher than another one, you know? So we'll do, we'll do a very quick SEO lesson, you know? So there are basically um, four stages to ranking on Google. It's a four stage process. So the very first stage is when Google comes to visit your website, and it will come to visit your website pretty much every day. You need to make sure that you're not causing Google a whole load of problems when it's coming to your website. Have you ever been to a website where you go to the website and it's just like, oh man, this website's really slow. It's like taking 10, 15 seconds to load the page. You know, they've got like some massive video or some huge image, you know, it's just slowing the whole thing down. Think about the job that Google has to do going to visit every single web page on every single website on the whole of the web every single day. That is huge. I mean, even for a company the size of Google to have to do that job every day. I mean, I've got clients I work with that have websites with more than 30 million pages on them. Sites like Wikipedia and Amazon have more than a billion pages on them. So this is a big job that Google has to do. And if they come to your website and you're creating technical problems for them to be able to get around your website, Google's just going to disappear, right? So the first thing you need to do is kind of make sure that your website doesn't have to be perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect website, but it needs to be in reasonably good technical shape. Now, if your website is kind of hosted on something like, you know, uh, Wix or Shopify or one of those kind of hosted platforms, a lot of that technical stuff is kind of, taken away from you, you don't have to worry about it too much because they're taking care of the technical aspects of it. If you've got a, web, a website that you're hosting yourself on WordPress, for example, then there's a lot more you need to think about to make sure the website's in, in good shape. So yeah, your pages should be reasonably quick to load, friendly on mobile devices, not hundreds of broken links. You know, you click on something, you get like error 404, all that kind of stuff. So re that's the first stage. Make yeah. sure the website's in reasonable technical shape. Stage two, you need to have pages on your website that are relevant for the things that your customers are searching for on Google. Now, that might seem obvious, right? <laughs> um, but I can't tell you how many websites where you look at the title of the page and it says home, about us, you know, uh, FAQ, or more often, it's just got the name of the company in the title of the page, you know, well, the title of the page is a really important piece of information for Google to understand what that page is about. And if the only thing in the title of your page is the name of your company, well, you're always going to rank for the name of your company. Google, you're not going to have a problem with that, hopefully. You're not going to have a problem ranking for the name of your company. So describe what you do and make sure that every page is clearly and obviously relevant for the services and products that you offer. Yeah. So if, you, if you've got a page that's promoting your well-being workshops, call it well-being workshops, you know, have that in the title, in the heading, on the page, you know, make it really obvious. And if it's obvious to human beings coming in and looking at that page so they can see straight away, oh, yeah, I get, I get it. I understand what that page is about. It's going to be obvious to Google as well. So relevancy is hugely important. And that's the kind of the second stage of the process. Just quickly, my name's Tyler, and on this channel, I talk about all things business and document my business journey. If that sounds like something of interest to you, consider subscribing. But if you're enjoying the video so far, the very least you can do is hit the like and support the ting. Tell him, Danny. Hey, support the ting. You gotta do it. <laughs> now back to the rest of the video. Third stage, and this is where it starts getting tricky, is that if there are lots of other websites that are just as relevant as you for those products and services, well, now you've got a bit of a problem on your hands because you've got competition. And so 
now Google has to decide, okay, I've got a thousand websites that all talk about well-being workshops. How am I going to decide which one's going to be number one or number two? And what they're looking at is they're trying to figure out which is the most trustworthy and credible of these websites. And they do that by looking at how many other websites out there, good websites, are linking to this site. When other websites link to your site, that's how Google kind of evaluates your site's credibility. So that can be a really tricky process, is that process of getting links in, into your website. And the term, you know? the term uh, SEOs use is backlinks. Um, Back, that... Backlinks just means a link from another website. So not a link from your site out to some other website, a link from another site to your site. Which is so a say, difficult part in acquiring. <laughs> very difficult. And yeah, you know, and, uh, and, and you've got to do that in a way that isn't manipulative. You know, you don't want to be paying people to link to your website. You don't want to be doing things like, oh, I'll link to you and you link to me and all that kind of stuff. It, people need to link to your website because they think you've got a really good website. You know, that's, that's how it needs to happen. And then the very last stage of that process is let's say you've got all of those things now in place. Your website's in good technical shape. It's got very relevant pages. You've got lots of great links, all this link love coming into your website. Well, now you're coming up on the first page of Google, happy days. But now Google is looking to see, well, do people actually like this website? When they, when they find it on Google and they click and they come through to the page, what do they do then? Do they arrive at the page and go, ooh, and then go straight back to Google again? Or do they land on the page and go, ooh, and then they start looking around and clicking, spending some time on the site. So that's the kind of the last step of the journey is to make sure that this page that you're offering is really going to make those people happy. They're going to love it. They're going to spend some time when they come through and not just jump straight back to Google. And that's SEO in a nutshell. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more detail in all of those three, in all of those four things. But everything in SEO comes back to those four things. So I can now I've completely forgotten what your original question was. <laughs> well, the, the question was uh, to get started. So, you know, for, for small businesses, how can they get started? So, uh, yeah, so sorry. Yeah. So how do you get started? So the first thing is, I would say, is to make sure that, you know, do the basics. Make sure your website is in basically good technical shape. Make sure that it is going to actually satisfy people when they're coming through. So do a little test with Google Ads to see whether people do actually like what they see when they come through. Make sure that your pages are relevant for the services and products that you offer. Those are the kind of the basic things that you can get underway. And then the process of then trying to get links into your website, well, that requires a bit more of a long-term strategy um, and does require some effort. But in a nutshell, the process of getting links to your website is to make sure that you've got things on your site, content, that people love so much they just want to share it. They just want to talk about it and link to it and share it. That's how I get all the links to my website. I, I have a blog as part of my website. You definitely don't want that to be separate to your site. You want it on the same domain name. And you need to think about what can what content can I have on the site that is going to be really useful and helpful to people. So for example, if you had a, a, um, a website that was all about well-being, you, as you have done, you know, you've put some fantastic content on your website that gives, shares your knowledge. You know, you've got a lot of knowledge and, and experience of helping people with different conditions. I know sciatica is one that's performing very well for you. So all these kind of different conditions, you know, give away your knowledge freely. That's what I do. And you might think that's weird because I have a website that promotes my SEO training. And yet if you go to my website, what am I doing? I'm giving away my SEO training. You know, I, I, I give away my knowledge for free. And you think, well, that's crazy. That's the thing you're charging for. But what it does is, first of all, it shows people that you know what you're talking about. It shows people that you're generous with your knowledge. It shows people that you can communicate clearly and get that information across. And bonus, it also brings in people who want to learn more about that topic that, that, that you offer, you know. So those are kind of some of the basic things that I would start doing. I, I think you mentioned, you know, it seems crazy to put out this content for free, right? And I love the benefits of, you know, doing things for free. You know, sometimes doing things for free can can really benefit uh, small businesses. Providing free content um, on your website, it doesn't cost anything to create. It just takes time and effort. And it's impacted me positively for, for my business. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I spend a good chunk of my week doing stuff that I don't get paid for. But the way I view, the way I view it is that 
I really enjoy it. I love talking about my work. I love talking about the, the things I know about. I mean, who doesn't love talking about their passions, you know? And the way, the way I view it is that all, the, all of that time I spend on doing work for free, well, I'm charging my clients for that time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're paying for, they're my, my, my paying clients are paying for the time I spend working for free. So yeah, they, they're subsidizing it. So thank you, clients. Really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you got to charge people enough. And obviously that takes time. You know, uh, I, I've, I've been in business for a very long time now. And I certainly, I certainly couldn't charge what I charge now as I did, w w you know, w w at the beginning of my career, you know, over time, as you gain more experience, clients get bigger and bigger and bigger and budget becomes less of a concern. And so, yeah, they they can subsidize those other activities. So uh, um, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and recently, um, as everyone should have seen, unless they've been sleeping under a rock, is the impact of AI, which I know is something that you've been learning about a lot recently. You've been experimenting over the last however many months, uh, maybe even up to a year. And, you know, chat GPT is one. Google are now in the process of releasing their rival, uh, I believe it's called Bard. What impact do you think AI will have on SEO in first, the near future, and in second, in uh, the longer term future? Well, I think AI is going to have a, a massive impact, not just on SEO. I mean, <laughs> SEO is the least of my concerns in terms of the impact of, of, of AI. I think SEI is going to be massively disruptive for almost every industry, and it's going to have massive societal impacts as well you know i mean i don't think we're quite there yet but the, the crazy thing is yeah I, I got interested in this it was actually about a year and a half ago i first started taking an interest in this and i am now obsessed with it uh, there's no <laughs> talk i mean almost to the point i'd now say that it's kind of to the point of being dangerous i just it's all i think about now is ai when i go to bed at night and i'm lying on my pillow it's all all i'm thinking about is ai so it, yeah, it's a dangerous obsession now. But I think, yeah, to go to your question, what's the impact it's going to have on SEO? Well, so there's the short term, right, which is right now, which is that you've got um, Bing have just kind of brought out their uh, AI and, and that's going to be released out generally very soon. And then you've got Google Bard's going to be following in a few few weeks time. It's hard to say exactly what the impact will be because we don't really know exactly what it's going to look like. We don't exactly know how well people are going to take to it. But if chat GPT is anything to go by, I mean, chat you know, GPT, they gained in the last few months, they've gained 100 million users. It's the fastest growing app that there has ever been in the history of technology. So if we take that as the basis of people's interest in, in using this technology, and now we kind of go and apply that to Google and Bing, I think there's a very good chance that this is going to be hugely disruptive to search. And so what this will mean practically is that whereas somebody might have gone to Google and typed in what is sciatica, and then Google would show them 10 websites with links out to each one of those websites. And if you really want to get the answer to that question, you then got to click on that website and go and visit it and come over to your website. You know, there's going to be less need to do that now because what's going to happen is uh, Google's AI is going to be trained on all the information that's out there on the web and it's going to generate a pretty full answer to that question. Now, at the moment, Bing's version does actually at least include citations. So at the bottom of the answer, it then says, this is where we got the information from and here are links to go and find out more. So you still got some chance of somebody clicking on that and come through to your website. On Google, the demos that they've done so far don't include any links or citations. They're just generating the answer. And the other thing, the other key difference is that it's not just a one-off answer. You do a question, what is sciatica? It gives you an answer. You can then have engage in a conversation with it. So you can ask yeah. follow-up, you know, it's just like, you know, you could say something like, well, does sciatica affect younger people? And then it will kind of answer that. And you can get very specific with the kind of questions. So having that ability to essentially have a kind of a one-to-one -one expert that, that you can converse with and get the information you want could have a massive impact on how people use search engines. Time will tell, but uh, yeah, I mean, what's very interesting is the difference between Microsoft's approach with Bing and Google's approach, because they, these are two very different companies. Microsoft 
has never been very reliant on advertising. Only about 5% of Microsoft's income comes from advertising. Google, 85% of their income comes from advertising. So Google are going to be very, very cautious about this. And they're going to be very worried about, oh, this AI stuff, is this going to impact people clicking on the ads and, and, you know, and all this kind of thing? So they're going to take a very cautious approach. Microsoft are like, all guns blazing. They're just going to go out there with it, you know, um, and just try and grab market share from Google and take, because at the moment, 95% of all searches are done on Google, you know. Yeah. So Microsoft just will do anything they can within reason. They'll do anything they can to grab some of that share and then figure out how to make money from it later. Google yeah. do are not in that situation. So, so in relation to uh, small businesses, with the impact of AI potentially taking away some of those uh, search queries, what content do you feel would be the best for small businesses to create to ensure that AI doesn't take away their, their the, the, the customer's search intent? I can't answer that question, Tyler, I'm afraid. It's, 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 a, it's too hard. I mean, the, I, I suspect, I mean, this is just I instinct really, but I suspect that um, the queries that will be impacted least by AI are those where there's a very strong commercial intent. So somebody does a search for well-being, corporate well-being workshops. An AI-generated answer isn't really the best response for that. People want to come to the website. They want to see the company that and evaluate their services and kind of have a look at that. So I think those kind of searches are, will probably be impacted least. I think the type of searches that are in, going to be impacted or potentially impacted the most are those more informational search queries where people are not yet at the point where they're looking for a well-being provider or a solicitor or uh, or a hoodie or whatever it might be they're still at that research stage where they're asking questions so it's too early to say and there's just it's such a massive change it's anybody's guess at the moment and i don't want to make predictions and then look like a complete idiot um, <laughs> six months down the line so i'm gonna hold back um and see how this plays out but as far as I'm concerned, and I realize and I, and I appreciate and sympathize with the people that are likely to be affected by this, but from a really selfish point of view, I never got into SEO or tech or digital marketing because I want things to stay as they are. I love change, you know, yeah. uh, and I, I, I love seeing how this will be developed. So for me, I'm like, let's buckle up and go for the ride, you know, let, let's see how this plays out because... I think the potential benefits from AI are huge. Yes, there's some risks. Yes, there's some things we may need to be concerned about. But in areas like um, medicine and education and all these kind of, I mean, it's just mind blowing what this tech could achieve. So, yeah, it, I, I, I just feel excited about it. Well, it's been uh, amazing talking to you. Before we go, if people want to, you know, see some information from you or get in contact, um, is that an option? You know, <laughs> where can people follow you? Yeah, so I've got a pretty active blog. Um, so that's on my website at seotraininglondon.org slash blog. But I also, Twitter is kind of my main method of um, sharing things that I think are cool and interesting. So yeah, uh, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at um, uh, at sign Danny Richman. It's just my name. Um, and I'm also on LinkedIn as well. And I do also share stuff on, on LinkedIn, not quite as much as Twitter, but um, yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Okay. Thank you for your time, Danny. And lastly, if you could just tell the viewers on this channel, if they've enjoyed this content to support the ting and hit the like and subscribe button. Hey, support the ting. You gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs>